let's create a wooden barrel in Blender. Stick around to know all the secrets about this that other people don't show. I put a lot of effort sorting all these steps to share with you. Firstly, add a cylinder and reduce its number of vertices to, for example, 20. Switch to edit mode and scale it up on the Z axis. Add three loop cuts and scale them up. Scale up this middle edge loop. Select these faces, then invert the selection with Ctrl I and delete them. Dividing 360 by 20 gives 18, so remember the number 18. Make sure the cursor is at the center and change the pivot point to 3D cursor. Select all, duplicate, and rotate to 18 degrees. Then press Shift R to repeat the process multiple times and complete the circle. Now add a solidify modifier and reduce the thickness to extrude without clipping. You can turn on cavity to see the edges clearly. Add a bevel modifier, then reduce the amount, then increase the number of segments. To reduce the distance between these blocks, increase the offset on the solidify modifier. Right click and shade smooth. Then apply only the solidify modifier. Now select this face and press shift G to select faces with the same perimeter. Change the pivot point to individual origins and scale to zero on the Z axis. Then apply the bevel modifier. For the rings, add a circle and scale it correctly. Then position it correctly. In edit mode, extrude upwards and scale it up to the correct size. Select all, extrude and scale up. Change the pivot point to the 3D cursor, which is at the center. Then duplicate it and scale to minus one and shade smooth. Now to close these holes, add a circle and reduce the number of vertices to what you want. Scale it correctly and position it at the top of the barrel. Fill up the face with F. Duplicate it and move it to the bottom of the barrel. Now if you check the statistics, you can see the number of vertices the model has. This is very high poly, so let's rename this to barrel high poly. Duplicate it and rename to barrel low poly. Hide the high poly version and let's reduce the number of vertices on the low poly by adding a decimate modifier and reducing the ratio. Check the number of vertices and make sure that the mesh still looks good enough. You might need to scale down these circles by the decimate modifier. Select the other objects and parent them to the barrel. Now switch to UV editing and on the low poly barrel, select all the faces U to unwrap and reduce this value to get enough space in between these shapes. Switch to the shading tab and add a new material called barrel. Let's start with the normal map. So add a new image and call it normal. Set the size to 2K and uncheck alpha. Change the color space to non-color because it won't affect the base color. Unhide and select the high poly, then select the low poly and make sure to click on this image. Then switch to cycles and reduce the number of samples. Change the bake type to normal, check selected to active, and slightly increase the extrusion. Then bake. This is the baked normal map which you can apply by passing it to a normal map node and then to the normal input. You can see that it adds the details of the high poly mesh to the low poly mesh. Now let's bake the ambient occlusion with a new image called AO, set to non-color. Select the high poly, next the low poly, and make sure to select the image, then change bake type to ambient occlusion, check selected to active, and bake. This is the baked ambient occlusion map. You can see that it defines the shading of the mesh. Now for the barrel's wooden texture. Add a noise node and click on it. Then press Ctrl T to add these nodes. Replace this by object to a color ramp and then to the base color. Change this color to brown. Then for the other color, copy the same and reduce its value. Change the type to vector and reduce the scale on the Z axis. Increase the scale on this node and reduce the roughness to get a crispy texture. Slightly increase distortion. This looks good so we can bake this into a single texture image. So add an image node called Diffuse and don't modify the color space. Change the bake type to Diffuse. Uncheck Direct Indirect Influence and select it to Active, then Bake. This is the Bake Diffuse map and you can replace all these nodes with this single image. Now let's mix the Diffuse and the Ambient Occlusion. Connect this to a Mix Color node and add the Ambient Occlusion, then change this to Multiply and connect to the base color. You can see the difference with and without the Ambient Occlusion. If you need to use this as a game asset, you have to bake another diffuse map for these two mixed images. So add another image with a different name and bake. Now you can replace these two images with this final diffuse map. In this way, the texture is going to be connected correctly when using it as a game asset. Make sure to save all your images. Now for the top and bottom, add a new material and add an image node. 
Select the diffuse image which has not yet been mixed with the ambient occlusion and connect it to the base color. Now switch to UV editing, press U to unwrap the faces. Select a face, move it to a good position and scale it as you like. Do the same for the bottom face. Now for the ring, select all and unwrap with smart UV project. Switch to shading and add a new material called rings. Add a noise node connected to a color ramp and then to the base color. Increase the metallic value and reduce the roughness. Change this color to light blue and feel free to adjust the values to get a metallic texture. And that's it. Check out the link in the description to get this asset pack which I will keep updating. Subscribe for more content. Now you can watch this next video to know how to export to Unity with other textures. See you next time.